are you, Peter? Yeah, good, thanks. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Peter, for your time. I know you are, you are super busy. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. I, I was eager to talk to you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult for me to start a conversation with you without mentioning Capstone and uh, how successful it's, it's been. We had a couple of scary days, but uh, so far it's really, uh, it's, it's been very successful. Can you, can you share with us some little last minute information on how it's going, how is Caps, Capstone, the ship itself going, how, how is Forum doing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you no, know, it was it was it was it was a great mission, and um, you know, uh, very very technically difficult for us, um, for, well for anybody. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, see a launch go up and think that was the end of it. Um, but of course, on the end of the launch was uh, was our Lunar Photon spacecraft, and you know, we st we stayed in orbit for for a very long time, uh, well a number of days, raising the the apogee higher and higher and higher, and uh, and then ultimately set it on a you know a a TLI or a translunar injection trajectory. Uh, then we separated off um, the spacecraft, the, the uh, capstone spacecraft, um, and uh, that's when you know NASA and Advanced Space took took uh, took control of their spacecraft and, and operations. And yeah, as you point out, they had a couple of a, a couple of scary <laughs> days there. Uh, but you know, my understanding is that you know the the, uh, the capstone spacecraft is 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 healthy and they've done you know the burns they need to do for now. So that's that's great. Um, Lunar Photon uh, continued on, and um, you know we we kind of kept it there as as a, as a uh, you know as a backup platform if required, and um, you know we, we we ran and have been running a bunch of kind of deep space experiments with it, um, because that that is a, a platform that is not only useful for you know what we achieved going to the moon, but you know it's a it's a great deep space platform for visiting other planets and asteroids and 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 so on and so forth. So. Um, you know, it's 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 been a you know, hugely successful mission for us. Peter, do you agree with me that Capstone, we can consider Capstone as an inflection point for the company? It's like now uh, I see yeah, you're playing in another league or that these guys are going to the moon. Do you agree with me? Yeah, I, I definitely. Well, we, we we certainly think so. I mean, um, you know, interplanetary spacecraft manufacture is, is non-trivial. Um, mm -hmm. and, and not only that, um, now we have a a small platform launched on a small vehicle for some tens of millions of dollars that can go to Mars, can go to Venus, can go to the moon. Uh, and that's just never been available for before. So as much as it is an inflection point for the company, I actually think it's an inflection point for space sciences because um, you know, generally those space sciences missions you measure in decades and billions, and yeah. now you can measure in months and millions. Um, Peter, did you always envision Rocket Lab to be an end-to-end -end service provider, or I don't know if this is for several reasons, could be like for increasing margins, going public, but from the very beginning, you said, okay, let's go into have a small lunch rocket company, or what is it that make you go and, and transform the company that it is right now to basically you're offering a bunch of services. Uh, you became, Electron is becoming a standard. So was it, what is, what, this was your objective from the very beginning? Yeah, so I mean, actually, the second Electron that we ever launched had a kick stage on the top, and in that kick stage had a whole lot of recesses for solar panels, and that was in always intended to, you know, to ultimately turn into a satellite. So we always envisioned um, not just, you know, stopping at launch, but also, um, you know, building building satellites. Um, and, you know, once we started building satellites, we realized, you know, that the supply chain of critical components there was 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 really strained. Um, you know, nine months for a reaction wheel or a year for a reaction wheel. So oh. that that you know that that just didn't meet our requirements. Okay. So that that's when we started either developing internal technologies or acquiring, <coughs> excuse me, acquiring companies, um, so that you know we we could actually you know, get the stuff moving at scale. My my question was regarding this because we have now we have a a, a small launch market that is. In becoming it's, it's huge we are we are having a in only in europe we're having like a, a lot of uh, uh new new potential players we have uh pld in in spain mm -hmm. a month away from launching euro one then we have like a, a bunch of providers in germany and other ones in france uk so i'm thinking if i'm starting a small launch company tomorrow and i'm not I, i'm not becoming an m2n service provider i'm dead in the water well, I think I think there's, a, there's an important dis, kind of distinguish uh, to make there is is it's is it's look it's incredibly difficult to launch one rocket successfully. Yeah. It's ten times more difficult to launch your twentieth rocket. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so although there's there, there is there's a lot of you know small launch providers that are trying to you know to build a platform to you know be commercial and be competitive um, you know I for as long as I've been doing this there's always been you know a hundred small launch companies nipping at my heels um, but every year there's a hundred or 90 or 80 or whatever small launch companies nipping at our heels and not not being arrogant about it but I mean the, the, the barrier to entry is is just excruciatingly high. And, you know, when you, there's only really been, you know, one or two others that have made it to their first flight um, and, uh, and and just failed to scale in, in, in any kind of way. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of people think, you know, flying a rocket once is the hard bit and it's, it's actually not, that's, that's the easy bit. So although there's, there's a lot of companies kind of trying, you know, as of yet, we, we still remain the only reliable, dedicated service. Um, not not to be as arrogant as think that we will, you know, there, there won't be others come along. But you know, I think when you when you pair that with, um, yeah, being end to end, I think is is very powerful. Um, it gives you um, it gives you a lot more a lot more options and and a lot more visibility. Um, and then you know, having a reusable launch vehicle is also um, is just an, another level of of um, of kind of you know, you know call it what you will strength that that is that is very hard to to overcome so you're kind of waiting a market consolidation it's, it's it's impossible not to happen yeah look i mean i think we've all been saying for many many years there's there's way too many small launch vehicle companies and and there's going yeah. to be a couple survive in there that'll be it but but um i think we've lived in a in a in a very buoyant funding environment for the last you know last five years um, where where a lot of stuff was 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 funded and that was that was great, but I think we live in a very different environment now where um, uh, that that level of that level of kind of uh, funding is 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 you know is likely to cease. And now I see your lunch manifest. I got, anyone can go to your website and I see your lunch manifest and it's extremely diverse and 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 it's impressive. You have a, 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 a solar sails, a factories in space with Varda. You are going to Venus. And then you're mm -hmm. going to Mars, so that's not easy at all. <laughs> no, it's not easy. No. It's fun though. It's super fun. It is super fun. Yeah. So, yeah. No, but, I mean, but, but my point is, like, if I'm one of those hundreds of small players that want to, I mean, it's very difficult to achieve this. Uh, to to get to this point, it's extremely difficult. It, yeah. You know, it 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 is. Um, and you know, the 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 projects that we go after are always technically difficult projects. Um, you know, we're we're very good at at biting off really difficult things. You know, the capstone mission to the moon was a is, is a is a great example of that. You know, the Mars missions and 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 all the other projects. They're, they're both exciting missions, but also technically very very difficult to do. Yeah. But that but that's that's what we that's what we really love, and that that's kind of you know one of the differentiating factors for for us is is that we do, we run towards those things, not away from them. You know, Peter, I saw several interviews that you were talking and even even uh, uh, speeches that you were mentioning the revolution of the small, maybe a couple of mm. years ago, and how important mm. it was for you to achieve these 72 hours cadence. Uh, mm. are, with this complexity of mission you're having, are you still with this objective or you prefer to have more complex and diverse missions uh, and to have a more uh, uh, timing in, 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 in between lunches? Yeah, so I mean, we we'd set the factory up to be able to deliver one rocket a week. Um, the launch site is licensed to launch every seventy two hours. Um, you know, not not that that we we kind of aspire to launch yeah. every seventy two hours, but that the launch site is licensed to do that. And you know, um, uh, you know, a, a, a rocket launcher a week is a is is a is a very you know <laughs> uh, big, big 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 challenge. Um, and but you know we, we've scaled the factory. We have multiple pads, and you know we're at the point where we can we we could support that cadence um, in in time. The challenge, of course, is is you know the market growing to meet that 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 capability and and that that cadence. Um, so you know we're at at the moment as we're launching you know at least once a month. I mean the last launch we did two launches within 15 days. Yeah. Um, we were going to do another launch in 10, within 10 days, uh, but our customer had a had a delay. Generally, we you know it's very rare that 
anybody waits on a rocket from Rocket Lab, generally we our cadence is driven by our customers' readiness, not not by our readiness. So you know, it's 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 really market driven. Um, you know, the the increase in in, in what Kate what ultimate ultimate cadence you know you want to achieve. But certainly we have a factory and a launch site that's capable of it. Can you tell me more about these uh, missions with Varda? Uh, because it, it blows my mind that uh, factories or producing something in space were basically uh, done inside the space station. And now we are going mm. to have like a, an orbited lab, orbiting lab uh, that then you're going to recover. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this first mission? Yeah, no, it's a great collaboration. So um, you know that that you know the Vado guys have have built um, these cool little factories, um, and um, you know there's there's lots of different applications um, you know for them. Our job is obviously to uh, to you know provide all the resources to the factories while they're on orbit, and then uh, and then target the reentry of the factory or the reentry you know probe. Uh, to you know, to to land back at its at its landing spot, and you might go, well, why 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 would Rocket Lab want to do a project like that? Well, I mean, if you if you look at our future aspirations, you know, we have uh, Neutron as a launch vehicle, and uh, and one of our aspirations there is to ultimately fly crew, and uh, you know, if you're going to fly crew, you've got to bring them home, and if you're going to bring them home, that means you have to be very good at at at, at kind of reentry and yeah. targeting reentry corridors and doing those kinds of things. So we 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 always do things for for a very strategic reason, and um, you know that partnership with with that particular customer is really going to hone our ability to to do very very pinpoint accuracy, um, uh, you know, landings and targetings and reentries. This is very interesting from. Uh, uh, for, uh about Rocket Lab that you not only are launching stuff and, but also collaborating and participating in technologically with each one of your partners and clients. So, and you're learning the process, which is, I love it. <laughs> hmm. nice. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a great relationship. How is Neutron coming? Uh, maybe, well, how is LC2 coming first? Yeah, no, LC2 is, um, you know, the, the guys are out there flat out. Um, and you know, there's it's, it's like any of these projects. Um, there's there's a big empty field for ages. And um, while you're doing all the design and the certification and licensing and, and all the rest of it, then all of a sudden the stuff starts coming in the ground. And you know, it's an exciting time because you know stuff's starting to go into the ground now um, at LC2. So that that's that that's super cool. Um, you know, neutrons pads, uh, you know, all all defined, and will be you know we. Know, pouring concrete and, and doing all those kinds of things um, you know here here pretty shortly so um, so it's a it's a kind of a fun time in the project like any project you kind of you kind of just kind of you know it almost feels like you tread water for ages because you can't see any visual visual progress yeah, but you know yeah. the, there's a whole whole bunch of stuff going on and, and the same with the launch vehicle so you know a tremendous amount of design and analysis and and now we're building you know starting to build full-scale articles which is super fun to see you know giant tanks molds and bits and pieces are you still planning to have a launch from wallops this year for electron yep we 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 certainly are yep um it it's governed by uh, nasa's ability to deliver the afts um software and work that, that that they've been working on for the last couple of years um but you know the pad is ready the rocket is ready we are ready customers are ready um we just need nasa to deliver on, on what it's promised so the uh going back a little bit to vada uh missions you are using them as a exploratory opportunity to in the future launch launch crew uh, is your idea to trans to use neutron and a future capsule to go to the space station yeah absolutely i mean we we we, we don't want to you know when it, i don't want to write off anything anymore like i've i've made a reputation for myself and saying <laughs> we'll never do that and then having to eat my hat so yeah. i no longer say that we'll never do anything because uh life is a funny like that um but but certainly neutron has been designed to be uh you know human uh, rateable. It's not going to be rated for human space flight, you know, out of the chute, but it will be able to uh, in, in its in, in due course. So, so uh, um, I, I imagine that you have like a, a drawing board or a, the first the first designs of the crew capsule. Well, not <laughs> not 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 in any great detail. Okay. Um, you know, we 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 we're obviously in, ensuring that it's it's you know it's it's capsule and crew compatible, but um, you know. I'm I'm a great believer in in finishing one thing before you start the other. Uh, hence the reasons why you know when we started 
Rocket Lab is all about small launch and we got the launch vehicle sorted and then we started to talk about satellites uh-huh. and you know then we then we deliver satellites and then we decide you know we talk about going to the moon and then and so on and so forth so um it's it's in this industry there's there's a tremendous amount of of kind of aspiration um and a little bit less execution um i i like to ver on you know urge on the side of of uh less aspiration and more execution peter where do you see rocket lab in five years five years is a long time frame like I know. five years five years at rocket lab is like is like 20 it's like dog years it's like 20 20 years everywhere else so um but I mean, in, in in five years' time, I would you know we we, we would expect that that Neutron is a is, is a stable uh, vehicle in, in in the market. And um, look, if if you asked me you know a couple of years ago, would you be going to the moon? I would have laughed at you. Um, if you asked me a year ago, uh, would you be going? Would you be building you know spacecraft for NASA to orbit Mars? Um, I would have thought that's pretty unlikely. Um, and so you know we, the 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 pace of 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 acceleration and movement is is continuing to be vertical which is which which is fun so long way of saying like five years is a long time and uh you know i certainly hope hope we we can continue on this trajectory are you excited with all this happening commercial commercial space uh by the way i never ask you would you would you like to go to space someday no <laughs> no <laughs> No, I, I have tremendous aspiration for for um, for you know any astronaut, um, and uh, I, I just I think I'm better on the ground than than in space. Uh, another question: do you, uh, I don't remember if I asked you before. Do you speak some Spanish? I do not. No. Okay. All right. Well, no. I could probably muster a couple of words, but uh, but but that un poquito, would be un poquito, un poquito. <laughs> yeah, but that that would be embarrassing for all. Okay, uh, Peter, thank you so much for your time. I uh, probably may, I don't know, maybe in, uh, uh, in the future we have the, the, the chance, I have the chance to go to or New Zealand or why not, maybe to LC to do a, like a live transmission or a live feed in Spanish. Uh, Great. Uh, I, w- I, w- I would love to at some point to go to, to New Zealand to do a coverage and to, to show uh, the factory. Maybe we can arrange that in the, in the near future. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for for your time. I really appreciate it. And congratulations with, for Capstone and the upcoming missions. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye. Cheers. See ya.